So uh, I'm dealing with some hard feelings this morning. A um, good friend of mine just had a serious surgery down in Houston on Friday. Uh, he's been fighting a nine-year cancer battle. And uh, when you think about how fragile life is and how vulnerable we all are to uh, hard things happening in our life, you realize, you know, there's certain things we can control, but there are a lot of things we cannot control. Uh, getting cancer is one of those things. Um, you know, as it relates to my own life and ministry, um, my situation with my friend made me think a little bit about what I'm dealing with and what I'm going through right now. And, you know, I'm, I'm struggling with some of my own disappointments in ministry and dealing with uh, unmet expectations, unsure results. We've been building a bridge, um, a theological dialogue bridge with the leadership of the LDS Church for over 25 years now. And uh, with every passing month or year, we ask ourselves the question, where is this going? What is becoming of all of this? And you know, dealing with disappointments or unmet expectations and understanding that I don't have control over those results uh, is similar to the feeling that I have about my friend Brian that he is fighting a battle that he did not have control over. And he has to trust God. And we as his friends have to trust God for his healing and for his uh, progress. And I have to do the same thing every day and you have to do the same thing every day in relationship to whatever God has called you to do, to be faithful when it's hard, when expectations are not met, when disappointments come, when things seem so unclear and unsure. And for me, that is a big battle. We have a great big hope that through this dialogue, God would do a great thing between Latter-day Saints and evangelicals and that something would emerge from it that would really be awesome. However, God wants to define that. And sometimes it seems in the process that it's no clear, understanding of what it is that God's doing. So, uh, you know, the question comes is, how do we remain faithful when we're dealing with those unmet expectations in dialogue, in conversations, in friendships with other people? How do you deal with your disappointments as you're struggling to know what God is doing in your life with other people? So on uh, cloudy days when you're feeling kind of blue and discouraged and down about stuff, uh, how do we respond to that? In Mark chapter 4, there's the story of Jesus on a boat ride with his disciples across the Sea of Galilee. And Jesus decides to take a nap. He's kind of hanging out at the front of the boat and everything's going fine. Then a storm starts breaking and the waves start crashing against the boat and the disciples do what they can for a while but finally they uh, wake Jesus up and say hey don't you care <laughs> don't you care that we're about to drown uh, you know we got this major storm and you're just sleeping and Jesus gets up and he just tells the sea to be calm be still and they marvel at the power that Jesus has. They saw his power and the result that they were looking for. So many times in life, it seems like while we're, you know, uh, steering the, the boat of our life, we're pretty content to let Jesus just kind of be asleep on board. He's there if we need him. He's there when things get really tough, but we like to kind of be in control until such times 
really require that Jesus show up. And then when the storms hit us hard, man, we want Jesus to show up and do a miracle and do it quick. But that's not how life is. For my friend Brian, we've all been praying for a miracle. And God has not chosen to answer that way. He has not been quick. In my relationship with my uncle, as far as I know, he never opened his heart to Jesus. And I'm pretty sad about that. That's hard for me. You know, in the ministry that I have here and in the ministry that you have with people trying to share God's love with them, trying to tell them about the peace and the forgiveness that God gives, sometimes people don't respond to that. Sometimes people don't say yes. Sometimes people just struggle and choose to reject what you have to offer. And as we struggle with that, we ask God, why? why? Why are not bigger things happening? Why is the friend or the family member that I'm building a relationship with, why are they not coming to Christ? Why are they not interested? Why is God not moving? And that's where I am right now. I'm struggling with some of the questions of, God, we have really worked hard and seen your hand. We've seen you do some amazing things, but what's it going to result in? Where is it going? What's going to come of this? And in God's waiting room, we sometimes just have to wait and trust on the Lord. Now, I do have a solution for us. <laughs> I have a solution for you and for me. And even though sometimes it... Uh, it's what we know in our head, but we don't know it in our heart. <clears throat> we may say we believe that Jesus is there for us when the storms come, and we really do know the Scripture teaches that, and we have confidence, and, and we believe that. But man, living it out can be hard. It doesn't take away the anxiety or the stress or the confusion. When you're in God's waiting room, it's confusing. But I know what I do, and I did it last night. I ran to the Word, the Word of God, the Bible, and I talked with God, and I shared my heart, and I complained. God already knows my heart. I didn't really surprise Him. We can never surprise God because He knows everything. So as you go to God with your burdens, as you go to God with your confusion, as you go to God with your disappointment on gray, snowy days when you just can't figure out what's going on and why your friend is in a hospital bed in Houston and why your uncle didn't accept Jesus and why your ministry is not going where you think it should go, what are you going to do? Give up? Run away from God? Tell God that he's failed? Tell God that, uh, you know, he didn't show up, therefore... We're done with him? That's no answer. No, going to the Bible. Psalm 62 is where I was last night. That's where David is fearing for his life and knowing that he has people that literally want to kill him. And at the end of his psalm, he says, I know two things. At the end of the day, this is what I know. That God has the power and God is loving kindness. He is a faithful, loving God. And that's where I have to go and where you have to go when we don't know what God is doing and what He's up to.